So last month, MSNBC's Tremaine Lee came down here to South Carolina to talk to African-American voters about how they were thinking about the presidential primary here. And speaking to a single group of friends, he found a wide diversity of opinion. Which names of the names you hear that people are supporting? So previously it was, you know, Harris. Kamala, yeah. Uh, you hear Yang a lot. Yeah. Um, I can't pronounce it. Is it Buttigieg? Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yeah, you, hear, you hear his name um, every now and again, and then Bernie. What issues are important for you, and what do you hope your candidate of choice will, will speak on? The issues that are really important to me, one, are women's issues and mental health. Um, particularly mental health because that's the field that I'm in. I'm not sure that a Bernie Sanders, who is as old as my mom, or Elizabeth Warren, or a Joe Biden, are the people that are going to take me into the next country that I want to live in. Now, Tremaine talked to those voters uh, back in January, as you might have caught, as they were talking about Andrew Yang, for instance. That was before Iowa, before New Hampshire, when the field was much bigger than it is now. So we thought it would be a good idea to bring those same folks back to see how their thinking has changed over time as the campaign has gone on. So please welcome John John and Jerez Mitchell, Najima Washington, Sam Bellamy, and of course MSNBC national correspondent Tremaine Lee. All right, so I think you were more or less all kind of undecided that when he talked to you, you got 36 hours, who has made up their mind? Are you still all undecided? <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Philosophy. Yeah. That's wild. So what? What? What are you waiting for? <laughs> Lightning to strike. <laughs> well, what do you? What is your? What is your thinking, John, right now? My thinking right now is, I want to see somebody who's going to inspire me to go out and vote. Um, and right now, it's been kind of tough to get that feeling. Um, I'm inspired to go out and vote because I know it's an important thing and we have to do it. Uh, but it's just been, been very difficult to find somebody who speaks to everything I want to see. So you don't, you don't feel like a, there's not one candidate that you personally feel like out of your seat to go support? I, I do. Wanna, yeah, I want to see like a, a merger of like the number of them. Now, Jimmy, you said there is someone that you feel that way. Who I do. That? I'm supporting Tom Steyer. Huh. I am. I have a different philosophy though. I understand that this this process has taken quite some time, but I want to engage in the process. People need to be informed and engaged. And although others may be leading, we're still at the beginning of this. We're still at the beginning. And I think we can push forward. I think so, that Okay, so that's interesting. So what, I, so what I'm hearing from you is, despite the fact that we've had three contests, and despite the fact that if you listen to the pundits, they will say, well, Steyer doesn't really have a path. You're like, I don't care about that. I'm gonna just go for a person that I like, that I want to be present. Definitely. He speaks to the issues that I'm, that I'm passionate about. He's been talking about them for a long time. And although, again, he might not be a front runner, we are at the beginning of this. Momentum can build. Yeah. And I didn't have a chance to participate in um, other political campaigns in the past due to my work, but now I can. And it's about exercising my liberty. This is an American right, and I want to do that. Jerez, how are you thinking? Um, I'm still undecided. Um, Similar to John, no one has spoken directly to me. Um, For me, I I know we had that Obama effect. When Obama was running, we were all in, and everyone corralled around each other, and we were like, yes, this is our candidate. I don't feel like there's an our candidate quite yet. Of course, there are people who say, you know, lean this way, lean that way, because that's what, you know, the black vote is leaning towards. But for me, it's like, when I watched the other day, I was like, this is a this is a lot happening on stage. And there is and there's not a lot happening about the topics that I care most about. And so unfortunately I'm feeling as though like I, I'm gonna have to make a choice and I'm just not ex- too excited to do that. You know what's interesting is so much is made about this idea of black voters being so pragmatic, mm-hmm. but it sounds like you wanna go with your heart, you wanna be inspired. How do you That's weigh the point. two of someone someone that connects with you but someone who maybe could beat Donald Trump? Honestly, I am not thinking about this candidate beating Donald Trump. I am thinking they need to connect with the people. If you can connect with the people, then you will win. It's not about beating Trump for me because, I mean, there's a lot going on with Trump and when it comes to the debates and things, there's going to be a lot that's thrown out there. If you can connect with me, connect with the people, I think that's what's going to get you elected. So that's fascinating. So you're saying rather than trying to like you know, listen to pundits or read about who's most electable. You're just saying like the proof proof of the pudding is in the eating. Like if you could connect, mm-hmm. then that's the, the, the thing that I'm looking for. That gives exactly. me confidence in you as a candidate. Exactly. How about you, Sam? 
I, like Jerez, I'm looking for somebody who's going to connect. I think uh, because of the Obama effect, we have a lot of candidates that are really trying to uh, connect with us as, as black voters. Um, so I think uh, I'm a little over uh, people trying to prove that they're relating to me as a, as a, as a black person. Um, I'm really ready to dive into the policy issues. What are, say more about that. What do you mean by that? And what policy issues are you looking for? Well, I think a lot of times whenever a, a candidate comes and they, they, whether it's a town hall um, like we've had in Charleston all this week, um, a lot of people will really focus on, uh, I understand African Americans or um, I, uh, I don't relate to you specifically, but I've, I've spoken to enough of you that I feel like I know what you guys want. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, get, you get those talking points and then they'll go into surface issues like mm -hmm. affordable housing or uh, crime or um, wages as if those are the only things that are important to African American voters. Um, so I'm ready for... No, go ahead. It just seems like you're saying there's like a niche. There's like a niche set of issues. Do you? Do you have you all there's, encountered there's, there's this? There's like four. That, right. That they these talk are the ones about. that when we talk to black voters, we talk about these issues because these right. are the black issues. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in here for yeah, a second please. and say this? I think there is a misconception that. Um, parts of America think that black people aren't patriotic. I love this country. I love being here. I love the opportunities. My parents fought hard, all of them did, for us to be where we are. And I think that, yeah, they need to stay away from just the getting to the, the issues that they think yeah. we care about and, and talk to, to me building and what, being what a does, part of this country. What does authentic engagement actually look like? Because we don't want people coming with lip service and you say you want deeper issues, right? A dive in issues. But what does actually authentic engagement from politicians in the community actually look like? I think for me, I, I'm really looking for um, I'm looking for past history. Uh, I need to know that you liked African Americans before you started running for president. That's a start. <laughs> um, so, so if you're a candidate that was always on the front line on some of those issues that were kind of important to African Americans, I'm hoping that you will do more once you become president. Um, so those are the kind of things that I'm yeah. looking for. You know, Tremaine, in your package, you, 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 it was interesting when you asked people about issues. Therese, I remember you talked about mental health mm -hmm. um, because that's important to you. It, it, is, it is true that there is a, a kind of cordoning off that happens as, as politicians are trying to get the black vote in South Carolina that, like, mm -hmm. they're not talking about insulin, but of course, like, everyone needs insulin, right? <laughs> or health care, or these sort of broader issues. How much are the sort of basic fundamentals of the message that you're hearing on things like Healthcare, for instance, drug prices, these sort of core, like, are you hearing those issues and feeling like they're, they're resonating? Um, I think a lot of people are talking about healthcare, but just in a, the general form of healthcare. They're not really talking about the complexities of how people who, you know, are trying to get insurance and then when they go and try to see a therapist or try to see a doctor that they can't get in because the prices are higher, their deductibles are high and so their copays are high and things like that and so that's a problem. That's stuff that we actually need to be talking about. I mean I understand healthcare for all and you know the different things that they want but okay underneath that we need to start talking about those things. 